Your face is your biggest identifier. So imagine if a picture like this was used for this. Deepfake porn is heavily prevalent online, with countless celebrities' faces doctored onto porn. As this technology becomes more accessible, ordinary people are becoming the targets. For victims, this can be devastating. There was a video depicting me having um, having sexual intercourse and my full name was in the video um, alongside my face. It was just the darkest time of my life. I just remember sort of sobbing over and over, going, who would do this? While deep fakes are a growing creative phenomenon, I'm gonna show you some magic. There is concern that they're contributing to a culture of misogyny. This is a violence against women issue. Deep fakes are just almost overwhelmingly pornographic and overwhelmingly those pornographic deep fake videos target women. I'm just one of the thousands upon thousands of ordinary women who are being preyed upon. While a staggering 96% of deep fakes are pornographic, victims are not being protected. I think this type of abuse, like deep fakes specifically, is quite worrying because there isn't at the moment any law that kind of prohibits it or makes it, it's not illegal. Behaviour that causes harassment, alarm or distress illegal on our streets why isn't it all illegal online? While there are those pushing for law change, will it be enough for victims of deep fake porn? Poet Helen Moore lives in Sheffield with her husband and son. You have to do it a bit harder, you go. <laughs> At the end of 2020, she found abusive images of herself online. When I first heard about the the pictures. I, I've been told by an acquaintance, um, so someone who, who came and knocked on the door and said, I've got something to tell you, and I had no idea. I wasn't expecting it to be that at all. I had absolutely no idea what it could be. Basically, somebody had uploaded non-intimate images of me, just holiday pictures, stuff that I'd shared on Facebook and Instagram, to a gallery and said, this is my girlfriend. Um, I want to see her abused, humiliated, violated, um, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, uh, please make some fakes of her. And they'd given examples from um, other images taken from porn sites of the kind of stuff that they wanted to see. They had photoshopped my face onto other images, um, but you could tell that it was not me. Anyone could tell that. It was bad Photoshop, you know, like, it would almost be funny if it wasn't so disturbing. Um, others were more realistic, so you could you could believe plausibly that it was a real image um, and those were disturbing. I, I hadn't heard about deep fake images. I'd heard of revenge porn, I was quite sort of aware of that. And yeah, my first naive thought was um, how can images of me be on a porn site because I've never happened to share an intimate image of myself with anybody, not privately, not public, you know, I've just not done that. So how can, I didn't realise that you can make and manipulate images. So I was kind of in shock, I think, in a bit of disbelief. And then I started shaking and felt sort of cold and sick. And just, I just remember sort of sobbing over and over, going, who would do this? <laughs> the images of Helen were created with traditional click-by-click -click video altering, 
not sophisticated deepfake technology. This is child's play compared to what AI technology has made possible. I asked leading deepfake expert Henry Ida about the difference between AI-enabled deepfakes and other forms of altered images. So what makes an altered image a deepfake? Deepfakes refers to any kind of synthetic media which is being generated using artificial intelligence. So are deepfakes more dangerous than an image edited in Photoshop, for example? To be fair to those people, I would understand why to them they don't care how it was made. The impact is the same. But having said that, I do think that, you know, what deepfakes offer compared to, say, traditional click by click video editing software or image editing software like Photoshop is the ability to kind of um, automate the visceral approximation of someone's likeness that has just not been possible before. This completely changed what what people could do with fake media, basically. Um, and I think, you know, some of the research I've done into this space is, has shown that deepfakes have made this an increasingly accessible form of abuse. Deepfakes begin with the person who will feature in them. You need around 20 minutes of video from a variety of angles to make a reasonably good deepfake. And to make a simple deepfake, Apps like Reface make it so easy. All you do is upload your image and the app will put it onto a celebrity's body. Tell me about it, Step. It looks like... But the advancement of hyper-realistic deepfakes goes far beyond amateur apps. This year, deepfaker and VFX artist Chris Ume went viral with his Tom Cruise video, widely considered to be one of the best deepfakes ever created. I got in touch to find out more about his process. To create the deep Tom Cruise videos, I had to uh, create a data set. And the data set is a face set of Tom Cruise with thousands and thousands of images. I have a set of 18,000 faces where you see all his angles, all his emotions. And what I tell the computer, I tell the computer is, now I want you to train on Tom Cruise's face set. So he's learning how Tom Cruise's face works. So on the other hand, I can find any video I want and I can put Tom Cruise's face on top of that video. And Tom, Cruise, Tom Cruise's face will imitate what the, per, the person or the character in the other video is doing. The difference between uh, what I did and the average user, user is doing, uh, there are a few things you have to keep in mind. On one hand, I have a, one, uh, one of the world's best Tom Cruise impersonators. He knows how Tom Cruise moves. He knows how he smiles, how he laughs, how he, how he does all these things. He also looks similar. That's, that's something that's really important. On the other hand, you have me. I'm an expert deepfake artist. I'm a visual effects artist. That's, what, that's my speciality, uh, my, my expertise, let's say. How long will it be until ordinary people can make realistic deepfakes without any technical skills? The technology is evolving really quickly. So it's really difficult to um, think about how quickly people will be able to do things like this at home. Um, it's coming rapidly, so that's why I create these things. I want to r raise awareness as well and show the creative possibilities at the same time. So um, I think in a few years, you'll be able to do something at home like this. A study by UCL ranked deepfakes as the biggest AI crime threat to society. There's concern that this technology will help fuel the spread of fake news. But deepfakes began on a different dark corner of the internet. With very many internet phenomena, what we actually see is them starting in the porn industry. It's sort of fascinating, actually. In deepfakes, it's obvious that the porn industry was the initial driver for um, the development of these techniques. And you're very much in kind of tech bro in their basement territory. So if you look at the history of it, you see this starting on Reddit with, you know, individual men coding up apps for, for fun or, or coding in a Photoshop type way for fun, right? And this was most noticeable with Deep Nude, which was one of the earliest of these apps to make a stir where you could take a picture of a woman and take her clothes off, essentially. I've never used it myself, so I don't know how effective it was, but that was the idea. And the tech bro who coded that 
um, said at the time quite publicly, how could anyone object to this? It was just a bit of fun. I was doing it for the lull sort of thing. And then apparently, uh, I think maybe six months later or so, he recanted actually and said, this is terrible and I'm withdrawing it. But of course, by then, everyone had copied the code. So this actually shows you another factor about the internet, which is it is terribly hard to control this information when it gets out. A quick online search for deepfake porn produced over 17 million results in under a second. On these websites, anyone can watch a celebrity of their choice engaging in a sexual act. But some of these websites go further. In just two clicks, I found an email address inviting me to send in a request for a custom deepfake of anybody I liked for a fee. I contacted some of these deepfake creators to find out how easy it would be to get a custom deepfake made of somebody I know. The responses were shocking. All of them were willing to make a deepfake for me and only one user asked for permission from the person who would be featuring in it. The most common concern was actually whether there would be enough footage of the person to make the deepfake convincing. The vast majority of creators who are doing this in a, in a, in a kind of sexual capacity, um, yeah, consent. Uh, whether this is ethically or morally okay is is not on their not on their radar, or if it is, they certainly dismiss it quite quickly as something that they don't care about. Under English law, specific intention requirements must be met to make intimate altered images a crime. Helen's case slipped through the cracks. I guess I knew that revenge porn was now illegal and I thought that had been a huge step forwards and I just assumed that this would be considered a form of revenge porn. But yeah, it was pretty bad finding out that the police couldn't help. And most people who I've told about this um, just, well, first of all, didn't realise that these fakes were a thing. <laughs> um, and then secondly, just had, were incredulous that it's not illegal. They would have assumed that this is a crime. Um, and there's a lot of gaps, little loopholes that I think the person who did this, whoever they were, whether it is someone known to me or complete internet randomer, um, they were pretty, they knew what they were doing. They were quite careful to stay on just the right side of the law in various ways and to sort of exploit those loopholes. I went and spoke with Ashton O'Connell, a lawyer who specialises in intellectual property to find out more about why Helen wasn't protected under the law. So section 33 of the Criminal Justice and Courts Act is a provision which criminalises the sharing of private sexual images with the intent to cause distress. So this is a situation where a law which was written with a specific scenario in mind, for example revenge porn, and hasn't necessarily been able to adapt to newer situations like deepfake porn. For Helen specifically, there were two elements. Um, the first was the intention requirement, because it's not clear who the person who uploaded the images in the first place is. The intention requirement isn't fulfilled. And the second element, which applies to pretty much all deepfakes, is that there is a specific restriction in the Criminal Justice and Courts Act which says that photographs which are explicit only by virtue of their combination with an explicit photograph are not covered by the Act. So that means photographs such as Helen's, which were taken from her social media, they're only explicit by virtue of the images that they've been combined with and they're not covered by the Criminal Justice and Courts Act, not covered by that offence of sharing of private sexual images. A 2019 report by visual threat intelligence company Sensity found that a staggering 96% of all deepfakes were pornographic, and of those, 99% involved women. Two years later, and the number of deepfakes online is now doubling every six months. In Europe, there is only one support network for victims of altered image abuse, the Revenge Porn Helpline. 
Hello Adventureport Helpline, Sarah speaking, how can I help? So because deepfake image abuse is not currently against the law, I think that does mean that a lot less people feel comfortable reporting it. Um, so they may feel like if they come to our helpline or any helpline that they may not feel particularly supported. Even though we've established relationships with a lot of websites, it's still at their discretion about whether they want to take the content down, and even more so for deepfake imagery, because there isn't the law to kind of cover them. Um, and they could operate from overseas where the law is just kind of non-existent, even for intimate image abuse. So I do think that deepfake should be protected under the law, because the impact of somebody having a deepfake made of them is exactly the same as somebody who's had their own personal images shared without their consent because a very small proportion of people have seen you naked. Protecting victims of harmful deepfakes is currently being tackled on two fronts within the law. The first, recommendations put forward by an independent advisory body known as the Law Commission. They've proposed to ministers that making and distributing altered images like non-consensual intimate deepfakes should be a crime. Secondly, the online harms bill will soon be debated in Parliament. If passed, it will force online platforms to take more responsibility to protect their users. But will these changes stand up in the face of tech giants and the borderless natures of the internet? I went to find out more about how these law changes are progressing. There is work going on already between law enforcement across the world. The issue is those countries that will not necessarily take part in this, that won't cooperate with us. But there is very much cooperation going on. It should be deepened and developed. And I think that international work is absolutely essential to tackling this. So how can we ensure that these proposed changes to the law will actually help to protect people online? There has to be a real determination and political will to make sure that the online harms bill actually has teeth, that is actually effective, that it firstly will send out that signal about a change of behaviour, that it will actually hold the tech giants to account for the totally unacceptable material that appears on their platforms and will include proper penalties that really do act as a deterrent to the tech giants not taking wider social responsibility. We have to take that same principle, behaviour that causes harassment, alarm or distress, illegal on our streets. Why isn't it all illegal online? It should be. Currently, there are a few places around the world protecting victims of harmful deepfakes. One is Australia, but this didn't happen overnight. In 2017, Noelle Martin was horrified to find what looked like pornographic images of herself online. So it began when I um, Google reverse searched myself, um, just out of pure curiosity, and um, discovered in an instant, dozens upon dozens of pornographic websites that held my images um, alongside horrific commentary and um, information about me and my identity and where I lived, what I studied. I just had no idea um, what was happening, why it was happening and who was doing it. I did go to the police. Um, I called the police, I went into the station and I sent um, emails throughout the years. Um, and originally when I went, um, I was effectively told um, to keep my social media on private. Um, but there was, you know, there was effectively nothing that they could do because I didn't know who was responsible. You know, it was it was just the darkest time of my life. Um, it was like the lowest. Noel campaigned tirelessly to get the law changed in Australia. Maybe I thought, if I spoke out, I could reclaim my name and I could rewrite my narrative on my own terms. Maybe if I spoke out, I could raise awareness about this. 
Maybe I could even try to change the law. Making and sharing intimate deep fakes is now illegal in New South Wales. It's such a validation and it's actually so powerful just having laws uh, because it, it actually almost, I think, helps to rid victims of shame. You know, it's, it's a really lifelong sentence that this abuse causes. You know, it's taken time to feel the benefits and feel what it feels like to have the laws changed, but now I can see it more clearly just how powerful it was. But for digital violence expert Adam Dodge, laws alone will not penetrate the root cause of this abuse. People get very focused on deepfakes and you really need to zoom out and be like, well, this is just one component of a much larger problem, right? Like deepfakes are a subset of image-based abuse. Image-based abuse is a subset of violence against women online, right? And that's what we're talking about here is like, this is part of a much larger ecosystem that has been allowed to continue unchecked. If we can educate on consent, then from that, we'll see a reduction in deep fakes, image-based abuse, all that stuff, because it's all about consent, right? And so we really, what we really need to get at is the people that are using the tech um, to do harm. And if we can get them to appreciate what they're doing and maybe change their behavior, then we win. But a lack of consent surrounding image-based abuse does not affect women alone. So how did you find out about the images of you online? I got sent a screenshot by one of my friends um, on the morning of my birthday. It was from a, a gay friend of his saying, isn't this your old flatmate? Um, and it was a screenshot of a Grindr profile where the first photo was of me uh, same photo again to the Tinder profile. The second photo was my face, but with someone else's body on it. And the third photo was a, a guy masturbating. And yeah, that's when I got slightly creeped out, basically. It, it felt like a malicious thing. Like it felt like it was like a, a targeted thing at me rather than for their own benefit. And did people, obviously it came through two different channels to you. Were people yeah. believing that that was your real profile on Grindr? Actually, my flatmate thought the photos were of me uh, and thought the initial Tinder account was me um, and the, the deep fake photos were me. And the way that I could prove it wasn't so I have a tattoo on my arm, the person in the deep fake doesn't have a tattoo on their arm. The Grinder one, I messaged Grinder to say, please can you take this down? Grinder responded saying, with some stock response, basically saying I had to send a photo of myself hold, with my Grinder ID so they knew it was me. I then had to find the profile, report it, and say it wasn't me, which obviously is impossible to do without a Grindr account. So after like 10 back and forth emails, um, was getting nowhere then, but the same stop response every time. So reported it to the ICO, Information Commissioner's Office, something like that, um, for a GPR breach. They got back to me sort of six months later, profile stood up, still not able to report it. They told me that Grindr were in breach of GPR, they'd be getting back to me to arrange something that was like some kind of compensation or some kind of like remedy to it. And it's probably six months later, they still haven't messaged me. I've chased ICO, they emailed them again, they say you're here for the next month, but they never get back basically. So has this had any lasting effects on you? I think the main thing is trying to work out who actually did it. In that it's quite an intense thing to do, like I say doctor the photos, put them up, and actually have conversations with people. Um, so my initial thought was it was someone from work, and so it made that environment quite strange. I actually tried to sort of uh, push people into, into like trying to find out who it was exactly, which is just a really, a really strange thing. And then more generally, I am now ultra weird with anything I put online. Um, just really, really paranoid about it, basically. Grinder failed to protect Jamie from the image manipulation he faced on their platform. We reached out to Grinder to ask about their content removal process, but received no response. We need to see actual tech giants taking responsibility for the material that appears on their platforms and, it, and actually then removing it in timely fashion. Microsoft, Facebook and Google are just some of the tech giants investing in detection software 
to combat deep fakes. But is detection the answer? The irony of this whole deep fake detection thing is that the, the, the tool that they're using to catch deep fakes is the same tool they're using to create them. And they just learn from each other and make better fakes. Like uh, one of my friends, Dr. Fakenstein, he created a video of a little girl uh, singing a Christmas song. And he put, a, he put uh, Nicolas Cage's face on it. Santa baby, just slip a sable under the tree for me. Been off a good girl. But these detectors don't detect it. It's, it's like a grown man, grown man's face on top of a little girl singing a song and they don't detect it. That means they're not waterproof. The impact altered image abuse has on victims' lives can be long lasting and traumatic. I've been to a therapist, I've done all the kinds of things that um, you might do, but it's definitely still there. They may be very anxious who they're talking to, why they picked me, why my name was on it. It's such a permanent form of abuse because, you know, it is online. It is always going to be there. Here in England, the proposed changes in the law are a significant step towards justice for future victims. But for many, a coordinated global effort combining legislation with education is the only way to tackle this abuse and its underlying issues. We have to see it as part of a wider societal change, not just changing the law to catch perpetrators, but actually changing culture to try to tackle the behaviour that's happening in the first place. That content, whether it's deep faked or not, you know, your whole your personal safety could be at risk, your name could be tarnished, like you could Google your name and the only thing you see is your imagery. We're at the tip of the iceberg right now with this, right? Like it has, we have not reached the tipping point where everybody can download an app on their phone and create pornographic deepfakes of somebody else. Like that's, that technology does not yet exist. So, but it's just a matter of time. Anyone can be the target. So long as your pictures are available online, and with a number of deep fakes growing every day, seeing is no longer believing.